When the first missionary Alexander Mackay arrived in Uganda from England as a representative of the Church Missionary Society to spread the gospel, he also taught reading and writing as well as equipping locals with technical skills using modern technology. His efforts as a missionary and teacher planted seeds for the growth of the church and education. Church and education later became inseparable in education path of Uganda. Later, Makai and Albert Cook were joined by Bishop Taka to establish the Anglican Church Mission in Mukono, where a secondary school, Bishop Taka College in 1913, now Uganda Christian University. The Church Missionary Society settled at Namirembe, where they created an African church for the blacks and named it the Native Anglican Church, that established hospitals and schools, among which King's College Budo, Gayaza High School, Busoga College Mwiri, Wuranyanji Girls, and Sir Samuel Baker High School, St. Mary's College Kisubi, St. Mary's Namagunga, and Mengo Senior School, among others. John Fred Kaziwe, the current head teacher of the school and old student, is pleased with the transformation of the first traditional schools in Uganda. The structures have been changing over time. When you see the first original structures, they are made out of mud bricks and they were joined by mud, but they have stood the test of time. It tells you how people were dedicated to doing a good job. But we got also a big donation in the early 70s, the IDA projects, which added new structures. But we want to thank God also in the recent head teachers, they have tried to develop the school into a modern school with modern structures to accommodate the increasing numbers of students and to also improve the other facilities of the institution. Kaziwe envisions Uganda's education shedding light into livelihoods. U Ugandan education in very few years is going to be very different. And COVID has exposed that very clearly. You will find a P5 child now able to use Google, can research information, and can question any submission of any teacher. Meaning that we are going to get an informed generation that will be inquisitive to find solutions of their own problem. And therefore means that we as educators, we need to guide students to discover what they need to discover. Post-secondary, technical and vocational education in Uganda later made its imprints. On 1st July 2011, as of Friday 30th December 2011, Makere University officially transformed into a collegiate university with nine constituent colleges and as of 1st July 2014, ten constituent colleges including the School of Law, all operating as semi-autonomous prints of the university. The advancement of knowledge and research as a crown in education are landmarks worth examining. Kalifan Chansanku, a mechanic, is a product of Iganga Vocational School. His garage at industrial area employs over 20 workers, 12 under his tutelage, while the rest are from Chambogo University, Nakawa Vocational Institute, and Bushain Technical College. Sivu yigirize, busobozi. Kubaka ti Uganda wetu use, tetuti ya yagala, ujeku jano uigirize, and they tell a degree mugu ama kanita, na hiyo hati nga tosola kusache njagala mungkola. So nga towa certificate, yi nje muga amanti wangu, ndi chichicho ina upu and again, From his students, Chansanku is able to examine the products of the education system. Geoffrey, a motorbike mechanic from Kisasi, says practical knowledge should be the bar. Bashil Sendikadua, a journalism technical officer at YMCA Comprehensive Institute, a Jews education should emphasize a hands-on approach. Basically focus on the practicability of the courses. If we talk about journalism and mass communication, 
uh, we are looking at how, how can a student uh, put in place the concepts of journalism through practicals. That is why you happen to find that we have the studios down well equipped with the machines for the start when it comes to the practicals. Uh, you go to the TV still, the same thing happens. You'll find the backgrounds, the green screens, the cameras available. And we always have to make sure that this student leaves the, the, the institute with the practical part at, at least at, at uh, a percentage of almost 80%. So the theory part of, uh, the, the theory part of uh, the, the course, it is an addition to the practical part. That is why we always produce students of, of high value and uh, good content. Sendi Kadiwa is in favor of a reconstruction of the education system. There are those additional qualifications whereby someone, you, you look at someone, examine his experience into the, 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 the kind of job he's doing or she's doing then look at the background of the, the academics. So it, it, is, it, it all rounds up and comes to the point of the skill. Even if you have a master's degree, but you cannot put work in place. The Ugandan government through the Ministry of Education and Sports undertook a much-awaited education reform by replacing the old with a new competence-based curriculum as spearheaded by the National Curriculum Development Center. Dr. Kedres Yajenda, Commissioner at the Ministry of Education, assesses the motivations. I eventually came up with a curriculum which had gone a long way in approval, but which could not be fully implemented because of the requirements in terms of practice. So the government guided that we could kind of do a blend between that which we were calling the reformed curriculum and the curriculum that we were running at that time. So National Culture and Development Center went back on the drawing board and now came up with this curriculum. What is different? It applied. So it is competence based. In this new curriculum, we are doing what we should have done from the beginning. Teachers are facilitators of learning. The education system is first embracing this new setting. Masaha John Paul, a teacher and head of lower section at St. Peter's Nalia, examines the impact of the new competence-based curriculum. The new com uh, competence-based curriculum was launched and as I know about it, what I know about it is a competence-based curriculum where a learner initiates learning and the teacher is not there to give notes as the previous curriculum has been where you come with your yellow papers and give notes and explain and go away but here uh, learning is learner-centered so we a teacher benefits from a learner, and learners create an atmosphere for learning to take place. About 40% of the population in the education system has adopted the act of using e-learning, according to the educationists. The availability of laptops and smartphones, learning online has been enabled. Dr. Kedres to the agenda says COVID was a wake-up call. COVID came in and we were all locked up in our homes. It became extremely evident that learning had to continue. As a sector, we had a, a COVID response plan which had three core objectives. The first one was to ensure continuity of learning even when children are not at school. We started using e-systems more to be able to um, access either the learning materials or whatever. So our website, the Ministry of Education website, became active. National Curriculum Development a website became active because materials could be posted there uh, for people to access. So uh, e-learning became a real issue now. And actually since then, the sector is in the process and quite, quite uh, a way ahead of developing what we call the e-learning agenda. We are looking at all the e-systems in the sector and seeing how they could be properly aligned so that moving forward, would not be able to suffer the shocks like we did. Dr. Tuya Agenda says ministries have been tasked to achieve the process. Together with ICT ministry to see that some of the big challenges to e-learning can be alleviated because they are not really under us, those challenges. Like having the backbone extend to the last mile, which is a commitment of the ICT ministry, so that as many areas in the communities where schools are part, can now have access to internet. 
Reverend Jessica Hughes is the e-learning manager at Uganda Christian University. Reverend Jessica says e-learning has reshaped the education policy. E-learning e -learning is teaching with technology. We most often associate it with the internet because the distance learning aspect, the online distance learning, ODL, but it's using all kinds of technology to engage learners, whether they're here with us in blended learning like we're doing or if they're far away on distance. The public has mixed view of the transformations. Especially. So if you look at maybe the side of education and maybe others, it's really very difficult because when you tell you to demonstrate something to a learner, even at the university, sometimes you come out when you really don't know what to demonstrate, you get. So when you, well, actually for me, I really think what can be done is to maybe make the education system more practical than theoretical. Something which you can really demonstrate to someone at the university, then when the person gets, gets out of the university, you can really do something practical for your learners so that they really employ it in their workplaces, not theoretical. You, have, you may have the knowledge in the mind, but to put it into practice is what is lacking. So I would really request the government to maybe make the education system more practical than theoretical. Yes. All schools are only teaching to see that they get the best grades, not for people to internalize. Uh, one of the worst policies is where you see all schools going in newspapers, saying, oh, we, have the, we are the best, they are advertising, running on all media to say we got five A's, ten A's. The trends in education are, however, covering up their pre-existing cracks. Dr. Maria Goretti Nakabugo, the Tawaza Uganda country, is skewed towards the integrity of the system. That actually, yes, you have millions of children in school, but very few are actually learning, even the basics of, 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 of reading. And uh, for the last almost 10 years, the situation has been very static. That you have, for example, 90% of children who go through primary education for at least three years, and they transition to another year without actually learning how to read and understand. So I think the situation that we have is an education for the masses, but where only a few children are actually learning. So the education that I'm, I described for me for, <laughs> for the last uh, couple of years is quite inequitable. You have children going to school, but few are actually learning. But that had also implications on, on the provision of, of quality education. So because for us, we believe as an organization and as educationists that schooling does not equal to learning. But I think the first focus of education provision, and I think for the last 20 decades, has been on increasing access increase access, improve the infrastructure, build more classrooms, uh, recruit more teachers, buy textbooks, and we, had, we have put less emphasis on quality education. World Bank report 2021 indicates that a child who starts schooling at the age of four is only expected to complete six to eight years of school by their 18th birthday. However, actual years of learning are 4.3, with the 2.5 years considered wasted due to poor quality of education. The report highlights 83% of 10-year-olds cannot read and understand a simple text by the end of the primary school. Challenges include high level of teacher and student absenteeism, weak school level management structures, inadequate availability of learning materials and large class sizes. Nakabugo says the time to put education house in order is now. It's to learn how to live with, with this pandemic. And many, every other country is thinking about this. So I want to believe that the, the few months that have been left between now and, and January, if there's anything that has not been done, this is the time to prepare. Of the effect of the, of the pandemic, I want to see a country where every child of this country has an opportunity to access an education that enables them to learn and acquire the skills, the knowledge and skills that enable them to thrive. The schools have been responsible for churning out great thinkers, scholars and statesmen, but its shades of color represent her origin.